All right. We are at the Typo 3 Developer Days 2018 in Dusseldorf, Germany. This is Piccaneri, and I understand that this is your very first Typo 3 event. Is that true? Yes, it is. Yes. So, so where do you come from? Why are you here? Why am I here? Because I talk about uh, design and design issues to developers and techies and geeks and marketers in general. So the audience is, is perfect here because my point of view is that anyone should n know about design because to me design is a thought process rather than a simply a visualization of things. And, and how, did you get, how did you get here? How, what was the connection? Uh, Oliver Clear, the, one of the organizers, contacted me because my profile is up in a speaker's uh, website. Yeah. Fantastic. And I'm so glad he did. I'm so glad he did. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you for coming. Um, I went to all three of your talks. Um, kind of cheeky of them to accept all three that you offered, right? I didn't. I didn't un realize that that was <laughs> happening when I realized it was too late. Because uh, I, I presented three, which is what you normally do, isn't it? Because you give it, the organizers a choice of what would, will suit their audience better, and they accepted all three. The third one, I was exhausted. <laughs> no mind. <laughs> I'm, thank you very much for doing that. So one was on the theory uh, and practice of color, which I found very interesting. And one was applying the Gestalt theory to web design, which was amazing and made me almost sad that nothing to do with my job. Um, like I'm not designing websites uh, at all right now. I am working on my own company website that needs a refresh right now, but still it almost made me want to go back and do design again. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Wow. What's wonderful. It yeah. makes my day that you say that. Thank you very much. And we're going to get to the one that, um, that I was actually the most excited about applying design thinking uh, and talking about th those processes. We'll get to that in a moment. But um, you have a lot of background in WordPress. Um, yes. Can you talk about the journey from being a, a an print art designer paper person coming, getting to the web? How did that happen? It was inevitable. I felt like I wasn't complete as a as a designer. I'm very curious by nature, and that's how I became a designer, by the way, because I'm not tra a trained designer. I'm a trained art historian, and I did a bit of fine arts as well. And that's that's where I come from. So, and I started with books. I started with editorial design. So, I I think it's it's inevitable because I used the web a lot. And it frustrated me that when I wanted to create my own website, I wasn't able to do it and I had to rely on other people to build it for me. So that's how I approached it. And then the more I got into it, I thought it was fiendishly difficult. And I think that's the big mistake from my point of view. Maybe it's probably not a mistake, but however, the big ambiguity and contradiction of WordPress, because it's sort of been sold as something that's very easy to use, but it's only very easy to use if you limit it very, very much to its basic functions. Otherwise, it's not easy, especially if you want to customize it. They've made it easier and easier and easier, and now it's almost all kind of a, a visual page builders. Even the core is going to be visu visual page building. Uh, but that's how I got into it and actually realized, mm, maybe I can learn this. And I, and I learned how to code. I'm by no means a developer, but I, am, I know much more than normal designers because I wouldn't, if I didn't, then I don't think I would be able to build and good websites and above all to uh, advise my clients correctly. I think that you do need to know, even to know the limits of the tool or when you do need to get bespoke uh, coding added and so on. So that's kind of how, how it started. And I can't now imagine life without it. And it, it was a big leap and it was difficult. Mm. And I, I think that even though design principles are design principles for whatever uh, discipline, however, it, there are many changes that you must make to your uh, frame of mind when you jump from the from print into the web. Hmm. Many. So WordPress is your tool of choice nowadays. What does uh, what does your typical day look like when you're doing client work? Well, that's a really good question. Do I have a typical day? <laughs> I have I have uh, morning uh, routines, but that's before work. So that's what grounds me, because 
then uh, it really depends. I may not. Uh, it, the, I might. I'm, I may spend quite a bit of time without developing anything. That it, it could be. It could be the case. So, and also because of the way I you like as you said, WordPress is just a tool, really, and it's the tool that happens to be. Uh, better for me right now with my clients. Getting very interested in type of three, also thanks to you as well. There's been a lot of indoctrination <laughs> going on this week. <laughs> yeah, yeah, there has. But I can see I'm ob objective. I really do think a tool is a tool. You know, uh, there um, there were moments in my life where I was only Photoshop. I wouldn't touch anything else. Other moments it was in design. Now I wouldn't, wouldn't touch them. If I can avoid opening them, I will. You know, it just depends what suits us. So. I could be, there could be a moment where well, all, all I'm doing is nurturing client relationships. Also, uh, research is what I do the most. Once I get to actually building a website, I have done so much work already. You said something in one of your sessions yesterday that 80% uh, of your work is done before you've actually installed WordPress yeah. at all. Maybe, maybe 80 is a bit of an exaggeration, but I would say a good 60%, because to me, that's why I insist so much that everybody is a designer and you don't need to do visual things to be a designer because the, the research phase, what, what comes before actually putting things into practice is the most important bit. And then, as I'm sure you can do with Type 3 as well, I have um, basic installs or various types so that will be adapted to certain kinds of clients so when I start a build I can I literally press a button and I have a basic installation where I have already a lot of the extensions that I know I will need already set up because that there are the, the basic ones that I know I always need so sure. they will be there and so and then I start building but when when I build I already know exactly what's going to be on the page because I've done all the work mm -hmm. before. So the session that excited me the most I, perhaps yesterday was your session about design thinking and and working on the web uh, in that context. And um, when you talk about research and preparation for your projects, um, I, I felt a really strong um, parallel to how my company, Open Strategy Partners, likes to approach our work. So we do strategy communications uh, and, and marketing for technology organizations. Now, the expression of that is often writing, but um, it's just as important to make or choose images. It might be infographics. We might have to do videos. Um, I really believe in interviewing as getting, it's yeah, really getting absolutely. to, to um, accurate, uh, appropriate information. If I speak with an expert, right, about what she does, then I'm able to understand that and maybe put it into the right context rather than, um, what I've seen some marketing colleagues do, especially in technology, they'll be afraid to ask, they'll be afraid to look dumb. So maybe I shouldn't ask no, questions, no, right? No, 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 So no. I wanted to, um, so we have a communications model that we call authentic communication, and we say it's built up of uh, empathy, clarity, and trust. So clarity is um, being factual, right, and not exaggerating and not trying to do things that, uh, you know, that you don't have or you can't sell, right? And that moves into trust, which where you make logical sense um, and you appear, you know, authentic in who you are, right? And building trust also involves then empathy, where if you look at it in marketing business terms, we have a persona that's on a buyer's yeah. journey that needs a specific piece of information. But really, right, empathy is putting ourselves in someone else's shoes. What do they need? What's their blocker? What's their challenge? How can we show them that we have a way to help them? Can you talk about, that's a very long way to get to me asking you <laughs> to talk about um, empathy in your process and in the design thinking world? Yes, um, it all starts from, from empathy. That's the, and I ask as many questions as possible and I ask them more than once. There's um, empathy really as, as we were saying yesterday in the talk, if, even if you do just that, and if you don't observe any other one of the phases of the process, you're already halfway there. Empathy is absolutely essential because when someone comes to you with a problem to solve, if you don't ask questions, if you don't put yourself in their shoes, you won't find out actually what the problem is because often a client comes to you thinking they have a certain problem, but if you probe and ask the right questions, 
you might find that actually they have a different problem from the one that they think they have. So asking the questions is absolutely essential. And there's a great technique, which technique which, which I didn't bring up in the talk because it seemed, you know, as a maybe too bit too much of a digression. But there's a um, a how to, to how should I define it? That someone that 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 is has been a coach of mine. He's a bit of a coach in the WordPress community, but you know his business uh, principles apply to anyone. His name is Troy Dean, and a technique that he teaches when you talk to a client is he calls it go wide, go deep. So you'll ask why first. You know, a client will say, "Okay, I, I want to, I want a new website." And you go, "Well, why do you want a new website?" Oh, and they, usually you go. Wow, why, why? No one's ever asked me why I want a, a website. You get in, you go, okay, because I need, um, my company needs to be online. Okay, why? Why do you need to be online? Oh, so my clients can find me. Why do they need to find you? Can you, are you not? You, and then, and then they go, then you may find out, for instance, well, because uh, I'm selling a company next year. So that's why they want the website, because they want to gain credibility, because you want, and then, you, so you, you, first you ask, uh, and so you have then three, sorry, I, I sort of slightly skipped the, the, the best bit, which is when they give you three reasons. So you ask why, and they give you, say, three, four reasons. And you say, okay, give me the most important one. They, if you had to pick one, tell me one, which, which is it? So they'll give you the one uh, question, and then you go again, well, why? <laughs> so, th so th now you're going wide. You you found you picked the uh -huh. one. So I establish then... I establish things that are important to this person, and then I get them to show me of those things actually which one is the most important. Yeah, and then you and then I dig in that one. that one again. You dig in in that one. So then you're going wide, and at that point, that's when you uncover the really interesting stuff. If you don't do that, you will not find out. And also another reason why you have to be really, really um, probing uh, with, uh, web people, with clients who need a website, that's what I'm talking about specifically, is that what they don't realize often is that it's not about what they want, it's about what their clients want. So we have to do it on two levels. We have to do it with our direct client, which is the, the personal business who needs a website. And then we have to make sure that we do it also for their clients, because otherwise you're going to give the the visitors of the what the use the website users won't get what they need. It's about what they need, what not what the business wants them to need. Right. So and you have a, to do it on two levels. Right. So there's a lot of there's a lot of empathy exercise. You really have to project Absolutely. yourself through a bunch of, of different levels and stages there. Absolutely. Because also it's a delicate balance making sure that the client understands that. You have to get them to get there in a way that they feel they're invested in because if you just go to them and say, yeah, well, you know, your customers don't want a, um, they don't want a, uh, I said, I'll just say what I said yesterday. They don't want pink trainers, they want orange trainers, just because it's the simplest way. But the business owner really wanted to give them pink trainers. Then they will feel that you're prevaricating them or that you, you don't understand them or that you, uh, you know, you just the, you're uh, dissing their great idea or whatever. So if you if you've done it with empathy and you ha you can actually show them that you know that the audience wants that because you've spoken to the actual audience, then um, it will be much easier. And it, 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 it the whole thing about the design thinking process is that it has humans at its center, and empathy is a fundamental thing that unites human beings. That's how we. That's how we, com more than communicate, that's how we connect, really, via empathy, so. So you pointed several times yesterday at sort of situations where um, clients have got the wrong idea, right? <laughs> Talk about when a client comes to you and says, I absolutely want a photo carousel here, or I absolutely want these colors, or I uh, you know, absolutely want these 20 things above the fold on my website. So how do you, how do you, what's that conversation look like? Above the fold. I think we should uh, abolish above the fold. That's interesting because I just had it, I have a Facebook group, I just did a live on that about that. Anyway, it's um, actually become throughout the years quite easy for me to counteract that because 
The, another really important thing to bear in mind is, where, is that when you make a design decision as a designer, you always have to, to have a good reason for that. So if you're fully aware of the reason why you, you choose a color, for instance, and it's not a personal preference choice, then you will always be able to defend it. So that when a client comes and says, I want bright green here, and orange, you are able to say, okay, mm, why would you like that? Is there a particular reason why you would like that? No, no, my wife likes it. And then you can say, well, you're actually a financial institution and uh, the green that you chose and the orange are normally associated with food. So you're gonna give people the wrong impression about what they uh, are gonna get from your website. Moreover, uh, orange and green, clash when you use them as a tax combination because they're almost complementary. So you're giving them good reasons. So you, and so moreover, there'd be a portion of the population that wouldn't be able to tell them apart. So you give them proper reasons. Mm. So th at the end you say, I would suggest you look at this different type of color that has a you know good reason behind it, either psychological or, or physiological. So you can do that. And then I always ask them, in what way is that gonna help your business? It, how how will it help you sell more? Do you know, oh, okay, you want a slider. Hmm. In what way is it going to, why do you want that? Well, what, is it going to help you sell more, do you think? And usually it's because they've invested money in a photo shoot. But the problem, you know, the slider thing, I, I li I've liked slider at times because I think in, in a portfolio site, I've had at one point a portfolio site which was a, once you got into the, piece it was a, a slider because that makes sense i'm just trying to show you photos so that's that's what it's there for that's the slider but on a home page it just means that you're not sure what you what you're selling it just means you you don't know exactly what you stand for that's the one thing and then a very very important objection is that um accessibility uh read voice readers what were they called sorry I mean, the technical well uh, yeah, web, web page readers for uh, people who can't see um, will not, they, they literally stutter when they get to a slider. Uh -huh. they, they, they stop and they, they sort of boop, boop, bounce and accessibility is a legal requirement. Right. So ah, that's, that's, that's the most. That's a very good reason, isn't it? So, um, so you always give them a reason basically. Right. And they will be emotionally attached to it. So you need to then put it to them in such a way that proves to them that it would be the wrong decision for their business. And so which the, is an exercise in empathy again. Absolutely. Right. Because you Absolutely. have to say um, and and the way we work with our clients at Open Strategy Partners, um, we are not a, a, a blog content provider. Right. Yeah. We're a strategic partner. And so if you've uh, brought me in, you think that maybe I know something about communication, you think we know something about strategy and structure and so on, so we're gonna give you the advice to say, you know, um, but you, we think our research shows dot, 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 you know, yeah. uh, this could help you more. And indeed the idea of how does that get you to your business goal, right? Yes. And, and then it's on us to, to create it and measure it and iterate on it and so on, but, but yeah, I think, uh, uh, I tweeted yesterday about your session. You know, there's the part of part of it is you know, you have a certain amount of value, and if you just kind of succumb to every request, you're pretty. Uh, that's pretty low value work, right? Absolutely, absolutely. And I'm not saying it's easy. Really, it isn't easy because um, there are some clients that I don't believe you can. I think that there is a category category of client that you won't be able to persuade, and that's in those clients. I think. I, I, I then tell them I'm not sure I'm the right fit for what you want because um, the more time goes by, the less interested I am in just producing something for this because someone asks yeah. me to. Because yeah. I know that it won't bring them any real value, that it won't improve their business, it won't do what they want it to do, and I don't want to feel responsible for that, for uh, you know delivering something that will not do anything. And unfortunately, I don't know about the Type of 3 environment, but... WordPress is rife with people who don't really understand what the web can do for them and they're not that willing to listen sometimes and um, which I think they will they're just not at the right stage mm. in their development so 
Yeah. On the other hand, with the web um, and, and the way things are, there is probably a service provider out there who is more appropriate to your needs. Absolutely. Which is, a, which is also an, a, nice, a nice client firing phrase, if you have to yeah. use it. <laughs> it's funny how when you say that, sometimes they really go really fight to, to stay. <laughs> no, yeah. I want you to yell at no, me. No, but that's how, that's, how you, that's how you do it. You yeah. just tell them, which is the absolute truth, you know? And sometimes that's it. Sometimes there are cases when a client wants a brochure site because all they need really is a brochure site they're never going to make you know so no. that's fine that's yeah. fine fair enough so they're about to steal the room from us yes. at this event could you please tell me in 30 seconds your impressions of typo 3 and this community great community really really liked it 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 seems very intimate which is great and it seems like it's a tool that covers areas that wordpress can't cover but I'm, I'm really intrigued by it. This nice. is how change happens. Nice. You know, because I, I see different possibilities now. So yeah. thank you so much for coming. It's so great to meet Absolute you. And thanks pleasure. for talking with me. Yes. Thank you so much, Jem.